My nice integration workshop 8.3, last one on data collecting. So this time we're going to be talking about whether or not to do electronic or paper. I'll go over Excel like spreadsheets and to talk about learning boost. But to start off with, what I've done is I've created a folder in my Google Drive, uh, which you can get to by this link, which has got all the spreadsheets that you can, that you can get available. So numbers is the Mac version of Excel, basically. Uh, you would be more closely related to Excel, um, or maybe related to Excel. So I'm just gonna jump onto here, here's IB spreadsheets, and here's my report. Now, what I've done is I've created this report. Here, if you download it and use it, and feel free to do, anything in yellow, you can put anything you want. So here I've put in three students, JJ, Jared, and Johnson. Anything in blue is where you put your marks, don't touch any of the white, all right? And it should work out. Now, what I'd like to do is to first of all, talk about feedback, so we've been discussing feedback. And if, say I've got three, stu three students, and there's three sections to, exam to a test, right? So here what I've done is I've, I've made it so there's three columns for this test, test. Okay, and the first, basically, it's out of 10, it's out of 10, it's out of 10. So see how this is automatically adding up to be out of 30 and the waiting for this is gonna be 20%. All right, so if I've got three students doing a test, the first student's working really hard. All right, he's got 10, he's got five, he's got zero. Next student has got five, 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 and the next student's got zero, five, 10. Now, what does that tell you for this student, right? That's weird. He should have seen. Why didn't he get to see? Look at S. Oh. Okay, a bit too clever for myself. All right, so in this case, one of the statements I've got here is, and it may or may not make sense, if 0, 08 equals zero, so if this equals zero, then put nothing. So because you've got zero for that section, you put nothing. All right, anyway, so each of these students has got 53%. First one's got 10 out of 10, five and one. Next one's six, five, five, and next one's one, five, 10. So they all got the identical results. So if we looked at these three, these results here, it seems like all these three students are the same. However, if we look at the results, this student's done very, very well for the easy section, okay for the middle section, terrible for the really, for the higher order. And when you're doing your work, I would suggest that you do 50%, 30%, 20%. 50% is the basics. Any student that's attended the class and done the work should get at least 50%. The next one is 30% 30, uh, 30%, which is the application. The last one is a 20% higher order. That's unfamiliar questions and to really challenge students. If the student, as I said, if they've come, they should get 50%. If they can apply what they've learned, they should be able to get up to 80%, and then the last 20% is what really challenged them. In this case, I made them all even just to make sense, so it makes sense. So this student's done really well for the basics, but has really struggled with the higher order. If I'm looking at their results here, it seems that either one, they've run out of time, or not two, they're struggling with the work, but they're still working hard to actually understand the basics. The opposite student is this one. So this student has done very well on the higher order stuff, but has not done the basics. For me, that would say this is a particularly gifted student who actually hasn't done any revision for a test. And this is a student who has capabilities of doing okay, but again, it's not revising. So they're actually, they're a decent student, but needs to do more work. If you sat down with each of these parents and said, well, your student is not particularly, not particularly good, however, they're working very hard. This student say they're quite bright, but not getting much, they're not doing much revision. So both of them, you can able to give very good feedback to the parents, telling them what they're doing right, and telling them how they can improve, what, how they can improve and what's holding them back. So because I'm actually informed, using more information, it gives me a much more informed um, result and feedback and give to the parents. So also the way this works is, this is using a lookup. So if I go out to here, 
here is the lookup. So it's looking up my results to see what kind of what kind of mark that would get. All right, it's really good to build that into your thing. So it means as soon as you hit submit, you can see the grades, and here you can see this that the grades are done automatically. If, they, if we do the next task, it's out of one, and they've got like this, so they've all got 100%, and we make this worth 20. You'd expect the mark over here to go up, all right? Which it has. Okay. We only make it worth one percent. It doesn't really make much difference. Okay, so this, if you feel free to use this uh, sheet if you want. If you have any student away, you can put them in the absent, and then this is the next term. So term one and term two, all your results come back to here. And if I move across, you can see this is term one, nothing from term two, and so far they're based on the two of them put together. This is what we see. Right, it's a little tiny bit under because they're taking one mark from term two to, to be able to get the thing to work. So that is using spreadsheets. The last one I'm going to go through is Learning Boost. Now, Learning Boost is a it's a really good online website for keeping track of lots and lots of different things. So in this case, I've got um, I've logged in and set up my account, and I've got a I've created a year nine science class, okay? I put in, set up my thing, maximum students, put description, everything, and then I've got my class roster. So you can actually use a CSV, which is like a spreadsheet and import it. In this case, I'm just gonna enter in here. Um, um, Bruce uh, Johnson, okay. All right, you can put in their email. It's good to put in their emails. Phone numbers, doesn't really matter. I go save, all right, so it's, saved and then I can go into here and do the seeding so you can add it in to make it the same as your seeding and then all you need to do so it's front of the class you just drag and put them in wherever you want the students so well actually these are probably four six wide all right so there's my students I click save so that's a good way of knowing where all the students are and why it also helps when you want to um, go well hang on it seems like these students have actually been cheating because they're sitting next to each other Right. Then you've got your, your schedule, so you can put in all your dates and times or where you're going to be get to, and access and access who has access to this. So you can give the students access and give the parents access, and they can see everything. Um, so you, and you just need to give them access codes to be able to do this, and then you can, and you can also have your policy in here. So policy is your classroom contact. It's good to put in some really serious rules. If you're going to do it, get the students to come up with it as well. And then you can go to your grade book. Now the good thing about this is it's much simpler than the other, the other times. All right. Uh, this student's done well. All right. Now, one thing you have to do is go into settings and go to grade scale. All right. And I've had to go and enter this. So basically it starts at 100, you go down by 15 each time. Uh, make sure that the numbers don't, are not the same. So it's 85, the next one's 84. And then you can add them in. Um, you can just leave it as percentage if you want, but I like to do it with the A, B, C, D. Uh, if I want to add an assignment, simple as adding an assignment. Uh, and this one's going to be an essay, and it's going to be an assignment. Due date is somewhere, and this is going to be out of 20. And you can put in the standards up here. Um, I'm not familiar with, uh, with whether these are the Australian standards or not. I suspect they're not. Uh, because they don't have the same code that we would use here, but most standards are the same across different um, studies anyway. Right, so I can say this person's got 10, uh, this person's got um, excused, so I don't have to do it, and this person's got um, 18. Okay, so the good thing is it's taken into account that that's now not gonna inf affect their score, so they've just got their C based on this mark here. You can do your attendance through here. The good thing about this is it will be based on, you know, you can put in the, if they're tardy or if they're absent, um, but it assumes that they're all there on time. Right. And then you can do your reporting as well. So this is, a more than likely, you'll actually be using your own learning, learning system. You won't have to worry about doing all this. Um, but this is a, it's a really neat way of doing it um, without having to set up too many parameters or anything.
So that is learning boost. Okay. All right. So to finish off, so the discussion board. Give an example we've been driven to learn. So we talked about um, giving feedback and everything and, and, and student feedback, but give an example where you're driven to learn to complete a task or challenge or game that's not work related. In other words, that it wasn't, you didn't have to do it because you wanted to, you didn't have to do it because you had to do it, you do it because you want it. So it might be, you know, you did a jigsaw puzzle, it might have been you learned to drive or whatever. Electronic or paper guide, grade book, which one would you prefer to use? Now, I, I'm not gonna tell you which one you should be, like obviously ICT integration, I'd suggest that you're gonna be using electronic one. Also, if you're gonna go into school, more than likely you're gonna to have to do your mark book online using their learning platform, but which one would you prefer to use? And different people are different. Um, we have many staff here that uh, wanna use paper, but so on. And finally, this is the last workshop in the series. What piece of advice have you taken away from this series? In other words, have you taken away some, what's something that you've taken away from the lecture or from the work you've had to do, videos, um, or even from someone else's discussion board post? Just, I want you to put in what's something you found. It could even be some, some of your own research. So I'd just like to thank you all. Oh, the, first of all, the Australian Professional Standards we've covered this week was Standard 2, 3, and 6. We've covered just about all the standards, I think, across the, all eight workshops. Um, I'd like to congratulate all of you for the amount of work that you've put in um, in getting through these workshops. I realise that it's not as easy to do it as a video because I'm not there to answer questions. Um, however, you can consume it in your own time, which, as I see, is normally on a Sunday, Saturday or Sunday for most people. Um, well done and everything, and once you've completed everything, we will organise your e-certificates. Thank you very much, and good luck with all your studies.